phone is still Okay, uh, so hi everyone. Uh, let's get started uh, uh, while waiting for the rest to arrive. Okay, so uh, my name is Leslie. I will be your presenter today for a UI, UI UX uh, introductory uh, workshop, right? So uh, this workshop actually aims to help you uh, understand the different stages of design thinking process and how you can actually apply it uh, to your project, right? And uh, hopefully at the end of the day, you are able to see through the eyes of your user and then prioritize what is important for your product, uh, for Orbital. Right, so a uh, quick background about myself. Okay, so uh, I first started out as a PM intern uh, at Zalora, then proceed to uh, mingle around at the public sector at KTC as a front end uh, developer, then later uh, eventually land myself a role as a front end developer at uh, Envision to better embrace the startup culture. And in between, you know, I also worked with a few startups like uh, WeSpace. Then uh, my colleague, parents, uh, it's more of like a startup guy, so uh, he ventured into companies like Two Red Beans and Sherpy. I think Two Red Beans uh, is actually, uh, sorry, Sherpy is actually a startup that uh, empowers a uh, female traveler to go backpack traveling. So uh, I think right now there is also pursuing his uh, master and he's doing TA for uh, 10318. So I think those uh, that is taking the module can get to see him. Okay, so... uh. First thing first, uh, what is uh, UI UX? You know, I like to lump these two terms together, but uh, take note they are very very different uh discipline, right? So we oftentimes we start with the UX side first, then proceed with the UI side first. So uh, the UX uh, which also stands for uh, user experience is really about uh, developing the interface uh to actually acquire the intended experience for your user. It, learned, it leans towards more towards the uh, user uh, research area. So uh, on the right, you can actually see things like uh, research information, uh, architecture, usability testing, and of course, uh, wireframing and prototyping uh, features that is uh, to your user. And then of course, you have some collaboration tools such as a persona's use case, which later we have, okay, it's just to help your group you know, focus on your intended uh, audience and then uh, better gain uh, empathy for uh, your target uh, user. Then after you have come up with a proper wireframe and prototype, then you will proceed to do the UI expect where you will add all the fanciful elements like, uh, you know, you have things like animation, then responsive. This actually refers to uh, how good your product adapts to the different screen size of your device because sometimes when uh, the size of your device changes, the resolution also changes. And when that happens, your layout also changes. So uh, it really depends on how good your uh, design is in adopting to uh, you know, different screen sizes. Then you have your traditional elements like your typography, which is your font. Then uh, you know, for companies, you need to enter to uh, branding guidelines. Then colors layout. And then you have your signature icons buttons. So uh, these two are very different elements. So next time when people are confused between these two areas, uh, you know you can clarify with them. So uh okay, user experience. Uh, so this workshop will be covering uh one part uh of this entire UI UX workshop. The first part will be on user experience. The second part I think will be held in uh, July on a uh, UI, which talks about all the fanciful part. Over here we will be going through the uh design thinking process which I will be covering. I think on the right is actually a user experience honeycomb. I think Legend says that if you actually fulfill all this uh, area, you will create a user-centric design or something that is close to a user-centric you know, centric product. I mean, it makes sense because if you look at uh, things such as uh, usable, it, it defines how, uh, you know, how usable uh, your product is, how accessible your product is, uh, you know, whether it actually appeals to a wide range of audience. Because sometimes uh, when you are designing, you might also want to consider people with disability, uh, people with uh, vision deficiency. So you need to tweak uh, your colors here and there. Then you also have uh, findables, whether uh, the necessary information can be found on the web page. And of course, whether there, uh, there's any business value in your product that accounts for a valuable aspect. And there's a few more which you can check it out. Okay, uh, content. Okay, uh, really focusing on the design thinking process. Uh, because uh, in the industry, this is something that we walk through when we are doing prototyping, right? So after we have done through the design thinking process, we will hand over the mock-up to the developers to actually develop the actual product, right? So uh, design thinking process we split into different stages. 
So uh, we got five stages. Uh, first, you empathize with your user, right, through uh, interviews or contextual inquiry. I try to uh, learn what they are thinking, their motivation and their goal. Uh, and, you know, for contextual inquiry, sometimes you actually have to follow them around uh, while they execute certain tasks uh, in their uh, workspace, for example, which I will cover more later. Then uh, after that is done, you start to synthesize all this information and try to re-evaluate your initial uh, problem statement, right? And define a new problem statement that is relevant to the information that you have gathered. That comes for the second part, define, right? So the first two actually uh, is part of your user research. Once that is done, uh, you proceed to the uh, ideation phase where you start to brainstorm with your members what are some of the core features based on your user research. Then once that once that's done, you transfer your core feature to your prototype, right? And then along the way, when you're prototyping, you might spark off some new ideas where you need to go back to the ideation phase and uh, reprioritize why it's important. Then of course, when you have a prototype, you obviously need to test it. Then you get feedback, and then uh, you know the cycle for the aspects continues. Uh. Okay, first stage will be uh, empathize, uh, empathizing with your uh, you know, users. So uh, it comes with two aspects, uh, you as a designer, okay, and also the other one I think uh, is actually your end user. So uh, as, a, as someone who is designing a prototype for an end user, I think you should stand in between, you should strike a balance between these two mindsets. Because after all, not only uh, are you imposing your design principle uh, on your product, but at the same time, you have to make sure that what you are creating is actually uh, actually lives up to your user's expectation. Right? Oh, by the way, I have some very cool uh, merchandise over here, which I'm planning to give. I think some of this was from the previous Orbital and some was from the career fair. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. so later there will be some questions then, uh, you know, if you answer correctly, uh, you know, just raise your hand, then uh, I think uh, my colleague will come to you and give you one of those. Okay. I'll try to make this as interactive as possible. Okay, the first one is, uh, okay, for uh, empathizing with your user, okay, you have your traditional interviews and survey, uh, because this gives you a very general and brief outline of the current situation, what is happening uh, at the market itself. Right, and this is for you to extract your initial trend and pattern that uh, you are seeing in the market. So uh, some of the key questions that you want to ask in your survey is, of course, you want to ask about the demographics. Okay, so uh, you can segregate uh, your uh, end user into different groups, right? Because, uh, you know, different groups have different needs uh, when things such as age and occupation are involved. Right. So, uh, next, you also want to ask a lot, a lot of questions concerning the effectiveness and satisfaction of existing methods. Right. If someone tells you that there's no problem with the existing methods, then uh, why bother? You know, trying to come up with something that's better. Right. When they are already satisfied with what you have. Right. Uh, and to do that, you need to ask behavioral questions. Right. You need to ask, uh, you know, how they go about executing a particular task that, uh, you know, your product is uh, working on. Right. Then at the end of the day, uh, you need to collaborate with your members by reporting and sharing your findings using visual diagrams. Right. Try to represent your data in the fanciful charts and bars. Okay. So, uh, contextual inquiry. So, uh, what this does is you actually uh, tag along with your user. You prepare things such as your notes, a video, a camera, and then observe how they execute a task from start to beginning. Right. Uh, this method actually combines observation and interviewing of users at their work environment, as mentioned before. So, uh, what's the benefit? Okay. Uh, it helps you identify some of the key touch points. Touch points means interaction. Okay. And also channels for uh, habitual activities. Channel means uh, the platform that uh, the interaction is actually taking place. It can be a social media platform. It can be transition uh, transaction uh, platform, right? Uh, and it can also be research platform. So uh, you want to know all these platforms so that when you are designing your product, your product is actually relevant to a platform and compatible with the existing user flow. Right. Uh, then you want to explore the survey response more in depth. Okay, by observing people firsthand. So of course, compare with your uh interview data that 
that you conducted while disseminating your survey to the general public, right? So this one actually helps to understand their mindset more in depth, okay? Uh, and also their motivation at a different stage of their journey. Then, uh, of course, uh, as you go about doing so, uh, new ideas might spark, you know, uh, and you can uncover like good opportunities in between uh, where your product can come in to address their pain point. And uh, perhaps you can even suggest uh, how to go about improving uh, you no know, different stage of the work cycle, existing work cycle. Okay, uh, so how do you do it? Uh, this is more like, uh, more like a checklist to help you how to go about doing contextual inquiry. So uh, of course, when you're tagging around and filming someone, uh, make sure that uh, you get their consensus first. That is very, very important. Make them sign a consent form. You know, ask for permission. If you are filming at a certain area, such as office space, ask for permission. Don't get into trouble. Then uh, you need to prepare things such as a pen and pencil for note taking. Then of course, uh, your digital device such as video camera. Then uh, you need to get uh, actors. Okay, not really actors per se, but uh, subjects that you are studying, subjects that you are actually telling, right? Uh, and so you need to set up a scenario, okay, and also a goal, right? What is the intended activity? What is the intended goal that the person is trying to uh, achieve or supposed to achieve that, uh, is, that is relevant to uh, your user research? So on the right is actually an example of uh, the scenario setting. You have your uh, date and time. You have your group size, right? Uh, and you also have details on your conduct, the duration, the tools. Uh, sometimes, you know, companies might have budget and, you know, as students, you also have budget to conduct a contextual inquiry, right? So this is just an example. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so last, I think two semesters ago, uh, me and my friend actually embarked on this project called uh, G6. This is actually a karaoke app that helps uh, you know, karaoke uh, goers facilitate their search and also their booking for karaoke uh, outlets, right? Because during peak hours, uh, you know, it's very difficult to secure a slot, right? So we actually perform a contextual inquiry. We, uh, we gather a group of uh, guys and then try to understand how they usually go about you know, uh, booking a karaoke uh, outlet, right? Uh, and also find out the different channels and touch points to this journey. So uh, here's a quick video, okay? I think I'm more of a question, sorry, but I'm more of a question. You know what? Don't talk about this. Can we just go see here? Yeah. So my friend over is trying to book a karaoke room. So first of all, it's miscommunication. Oh, that's me, by the way. Wait,请不吝点赞！啊，这问题喂，啊，我只是啊，五点半、六点半啊，他凌晨三点半啊，可能不可能？Room please，我们四点，好不？English please，哦，我我可以讲中文。啊什么？要我说英文？小明啊啊啊，接下啊，我说的很忙啊，超人超人，啊，你跟我说中文就别打了。Miscommunication. Second will be obsolete. Uh, Hello. Hello, yes. I would like to book a small room. So this time he has successfully booked a room. To their disappointment, they actually moved the location. So this is when they actually arrive at the location after much searching for the place. Hello, yes. I would like to book a small room. Uh, happy day! Happy day! Uh, happy day. Uh, Hello, welcome to uh, Happy Time. The room will be the first room to the right. Okay, close to behind. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yay, finally can sing here. Yeah, I'm so excited. So there's no television. Where's the TV? Yeah. How to sing it? You don't even have a karaoke machine. I give up. I give up. I won't fail in my finals. So uh, a bit of exaggeration. So uh, in the end, uh, the guys were left uh, disappointed. So if you think about it, this video actually speaks to three process, right? 
First one is the research, second one is the booking, the third one is the actual uh, arrival. So uh, of course this is, uh, a lot of this are scripted, but when you're doing your actual contextual inquiry, it will be good uh, if you don't interfere with the subjects and let them do whatever they want. So you can get more uh, accurate data, right? Uh, and then uh, being able to empathize with them at a different stage of the workflow. Okay, uh, okay no. Not watching this again. Oh, it's space space. Okay, so uh, this is an example of a user journey map to actually represent the different stages that uh, you know the user go to. In this case, this is the user map that I did for uh, my project. Right. So, uh, okay. Uh, before that, before that was that. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the main reason why we are doing this is really to help to keep your design relevant. Okay. Understand the channels and the dis different touch points, right? Uh, and making sure that your product is compatible with existing workflow and general. This is very important because if uh, the user can't uh, think of how your product will actually value add to their current work cycle, then uh, they wouldn't even consider, right? And uh, unless you are trying to revamp the entire work cycle, but uh, given the amount of time that you have in Orbiter, I don't think that's very likely unless you have already prepared beforehand, okay? So, uh, organizing structure. So, how do you do a simple uh, UJM user journey map, right? Uh, you have your scenarios, different stages. You have your goals, right? Uh, different sub goals at different stages. Then you have your emotional journey, right? From uh, happy to sad and maybe to happy again. Then uh, you have your problems at different uh, touch points, right? Then uh, you have your opportunities for improvement, right? That's where all your ideas come in at different locations. Make sure to uh, actually take notes while you are conducting your uh, contextual inquiry so that you don't lose track of your wonderful ideas. Then uh, you have your expectation at different journey and also user stories. Uh, you have your traditional user story. So as a type of user, I want to achieve this so that I can benefit something else, right? So uh, next, after you have collected all this information, uh, so the video was a bit long, so we need to turn it down. So uh, I'm looking for Tim Nibori, who is going to be for uh, for project conservation at 10.30. Is, is the team here, Tim Nibori? Oh, okay, cool. Okay, sorry, please continue. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so after right, you... Uh, so, so after you guys have uh, gathered all your, uh, you know, findings, uh, do all your research in the uh, initial phase, Right, then uh, it's good that you guys can actually uh you know represent each feedback, each observation on a post it, right? Uh, which you will face on like a whiteboard or a wall, paste everything on a whiteboard and a wall, then at, then at the same time trying to extract some of the common patterns, right? A common theme that your product should address rather than working with individual data points, right? So uh, this is also an activity that we will be doing later on. Uh, we have posting and storyboard here. Right. Uh, tools we will be providing some tools for you guys. We have markers. We have posters. Oh, we don't have white box. Sorry, we will be using the wall over here. So that should be enough, I hope. Okay. Uh, so how you go about doing this exercise, right? So uh, this exercise is actually split into uh four categories, right? Four different labels. We work from bottom to top, right? First, we have your yellow labels where you list out all your individual issues on each uh posting, right? Then after that, you group them together. Uh, under a blue label, uh, it can be a common concept or a common uh, feature that is relevant to these issues. Then next, you try to lump all the blue label together and list it under umbrella uh, pink label, right? Uh, which is the main concern across uh, blue labels, main concern of your end user. Uh, we, I will show you an example later. Then of course, uh, you have your green label, which is your topic that summarizes the entire posting notes. Right, or affinity notes. Right, so this is that affinity diagram that I did uh, from the karaoke app the other time. Right, so, uh, you know, let's work from bottom to top. So we have things such as no answer that 
right? Uh, you you don't receive like a you know like a like like an answer on a phone call when you are making a query about a booking location. So that accounts for that. Then you also have live distortion. And if you think about it, these two post takes actually, uh, the the main issue with these two post takes is actually points towards the lack of clarity. Then uh, on the right, you also have things such as uh, you observe your user using Google Map to find a location and realize the distance is wrong, right? Then this accounts for navigation problem. Uh, then you go and merge these two together, then you realize that this actually boils down to communication, right? And then you later do the same for the rest. Mm. Right, so later you'll be doing an experiment like this, uh, where you will get feedback from your peers around you. Then you try to extract uh, you know, some common patterns that hopefully will help to you know, address some of the uh, pain points that your customer is facing and making sure that uh, your app actually addresses them. Okay, so uh, some general guidelines for this activity. We won't be doing it now. Uh, we're really doing at the end of the workshop. So of course, when you are doing it, you place one note at a time. You read a lot of content so that your member is aware. Okay. Uh, don't try to fix the position of our affinity. You know, your member might have a different opinion, right? So uh, you know, feel free to challenge the existing positions, right? Then uh, don't go and force your idea into predetermined uh, category. Uh, learn to create a new category label if your posting doesn't fit a particular group. Uh, try to be as open mind as possible. So if a note belongs to two group, then make a second note, okay, to be clearer. Because we only care about the label, we only care about the pattern that we observe. We don't care about the individual uh, data points, right? So uh, if you cannot decide uh, which group it falls belongs to, maybe you you know go and group those uh, undecisive notes together and then we revisit them later, right? Uh, don't let it hold you back from the exercise. Then uh, we have come to a next stage, which is uh, defining uh, your initial problem statement into something that is more concrete, something that is more actionable, right? So uh, Empathy Map uh, is one of the tools that we use, right? To uh, actually define uh, what our users say and see Okay, uh, using their five senses. So let's start from, let's, let's go uh, clockwise, right? Starting off with uh, what do they think and feel. This one targets more towards the emotion of the user, right? And also a bit of self-reflection, right? Next, we have what do they see. This is the things that they observe, right? That shows on the interface itself or maybe the environment they are working in. So these are essentially the content of the interface that they see uh, when they execute the task intended. Okay, what do they say is something that uh, is statements that they wish to make known, right? To their uh, moderator or to the designer to raise a particular point, right? Uh, is different from what do they think and feel is different from those uh, self-reflection statements because over here you are trying to raise something to gain the attention of uh, of the opposite parties and to expect the feedback from them. So some example would be I want something that is reliable, right? I was expecting something different or what do you think or it can be questions that are from the other party. Right, so this accounts for the expect. Okay, uh, and what do they do is the things that they are actually executing. Right, uh, can be a research execution, like listing the pros and cons and also filtering, uh, you know, different products. Uh, applying promo codes and these are some of the habitual, uh, you know, behaviors that they are exhibiting. Uh, what do they hear would more of, uh, like the feedback and response that they are getting. Right, uh, can be statements made by uh, involved parties and uh, can also be uh, the feedback that they are getting, like maybe happy hours are over by one get one free things like that. And also pains will be your goals, right? Uh, sorry, pains is not your goals. Pain uh, is actually the pain point that you are trying to solve the problems, underlying issues. Then uh, you have your gains, which is your goal, right? Which is to which is to save time, you know, uh, assurance, cheaper rates, uh, just to mention some examples, right? So uh, here's our first activity. 
Right, so over here we have 10 uh, post takes, right? We are trying to uh, map them to like the different parts of the affinity, uh, sorry, the empathy map, right? Uh, so if you know the answer, you just raise up your hand, right? Then maybe Terence will get to you, then maybe uh, I can also give up some of the prizes over here. Okay, the first one should be quite easy. Let's get started. So, uh, any takers? Yeah, just, just, just raise your hand. Or just shout out the answer. Okay, confusing. Okay, uh, where should it fall under? Yeah. Like, just raise your hand. Yeah, just raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have price. Just, just take only. Okay, so for this question, <laughs> let us give out this thing. Don't fear the unknown. Okay. Yes. So for confusing, which section does it fall under? Someone raise up your hand. Anyone? Oh, we are trying to group up the words on top, right, into the correct section here. Because in the empathy map, we are trying to uh, yeah, yeah, guess yeah. what the user is thinking of when uh, the user encounters this problem. So it should be quite easy, right? The first one, confusing. Yeah. So confusing is what kind of... Uh, we, which segment does it fall under? Yeah. Just raise up your hand, then you will get a prize as simple as that. Okay, you. Okay, okay. okay what do you think at you? Okay. So let us just do this very quickly. Yes, yes, yes. We don't have much time. Yeah, we right? don't have much time. So uh, next one uh, will be uh, convenience. What is it? Where does this lie? Come on, guys. What do they do? Not quite there. James? Not really feeling. Is convenient a feeling? No. Convenient is not a feeling. Games? Did someone say games? Did someone say... Any, anyone said games just now? Who said games? I heard games. No? She said yeah. games. Oh, she said games. <laughs> oh, you guys want to fight it out? <laughs> next question. <laughs> yeah, let's use the next question to fight it out. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so we know that convenience falls under games. Okay, the next one will be where can I find it? Okay, this one is a bit tricky. Which one does it go under? Are you sure? C is more towards <laughs> content on the interface. <laughs> so so when 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 do you uh okay actually I give the answer when do you ask yourself these questions? Okay yeah, he got it right. <laughs> oh, so what do you say? What was your it's a self-reflecting question, right? Self-reflecting yes. question. Yeah. It's very simple. Okay, the next one is just Googling on the website. What is this? Okay, yes, the gentleman over there. What do, you, what do you say? What was your answer? Yes, correct. What do they do? Okay. Correct. Okay, next one, uh, line distortion. You have to say out loud the answer. Yeah, yeah, my shout out, my shout out. Try to be... Uh... Sure or not, line distortion, you can see line distortion. <laughs> can see line distortion. Pins. Yes, correct, pins. Who said pins just now? <laughs> okay, next one. What's Games. the okay? What's Wait, the fastest what's way? The... Fast, fast, fast. I want to give everything. Uh, what's the fastest way? Okay, this one. Uh, is, I think it's the trickiest question. <laughs> this one can actually match to two segments. So I think we 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 increase the stake lah, huh? So if you are able to answer the question correctly, we give something that is bigger. So mm. this one actually can be met to two components. Okay. So I think uh, just now uh, you mentioned one component. Uh, depend on you whether you want to share with the rest. And there's another. So quickly, someone else who hasn't won anything yet, can we figure out the answer for what's the fastest way? Yes, yes, yes. That so for this question, up. it can be mapped to two sections here. Thing and do? Is it correct? Thing and do. The second one, I don't think is correct. Okay, you but we know the do, first right? one There's is no correct. Execution, right? There's no execution involved. Yes, yes. yes, yes, someone say... Thing and what? Thing and say. Thing and say or thing and hear? Who said thing and say? Say thing and say. Oh, she got it correct. <laughs> yes. Okay, Uh, let's speed things up. Okay, friend's suggestion. Okay, friend's suggestion, someone is talking to you. 
Which input does this go to? Come on, come on, guys. Friends suggestion. Come on, hurry up. Guys. Yes. The guy got it correct. Okay, uh, we still got... Okay, the next one. Huawei is in trouble. Oh, no. What is this? You must raise your hand. I cannot see. <laughs> No, I, someone said the correct answer, but you guys need to raise your hand. Yeah, you guys we, need to raise your hand. We have limited sorry. prizes. Right? We are left with four more. Okay, this I is. Just, I think this was from California. From the, uh, it's okay. Google. I think we will give out these three things. This thing looks very flimsy. Okay, okay. Come on, come on, guys. If not, we will. Uh... Yes, uh, the gentleman over there. Sorry, he came in first. Maybe you okay. can try the next question. Okay, the next question will be quick. Quick, 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 come on. What do they do? Who was that? Okay. Okay, the, the, the last one I answer myself. La. What do they see? La? <laughs> okay, 2404 four users. This is obviously a content that you see in the interface. Okay, uh, next one. Okay, uh, next one will be... Uh, I think we have still have uh, two more questions. La. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the next one will be uh, personas, right? This is a collaboration tool for you to identify your end user. Right, it adds a little bit of human touch to your user research because uh, it actually includes your user profile image and also a bit of, uh, you know, uh, demographics and also some of the platforms that the user is using to execute their existing workflow, right? So some of the common uh, essence will be profile pic, name and title, quotes that reflect the attitude, uh, demographics, your traits that reflect the characteristic of this person, right? And also goals and needs and etc. etc. So if you think about it, uh, this uh, persona actually synthesizes all the end users that you have encountered into one simple chart where you can uh, use for collaboration and making sure that your uh, product is actually kept on track okay and also uh that applies to the rest of the members as well uh, otherwise you guys will have differing uh, opinions on how uh, you know a particular user will behave and react to your product okay so uh problem statement so after doing all those research doing all those personas then you need to uh redefine your problem statement right because obviously your initial problem statement might change so this is a simple framework so to overcome a uh, problem we can uh you know come up with a solution so that the target audience can gain so uh there's four aspects we need to talk about we need to list out the problems that you identify solutions that uh your team have come up with right and also the target audience that you have pinpoint when doing your contextual inquiry and also uh you know what do they uh what do the user expect to gain at each stage right uh this is more in line with their expectations so a good problem statement uh, uh is actually something like to overcome the difficulties of securing a karaoke room during peak hours they can consolidate you know all the information across outlets so that karaoke goers Goers can perform their search in a single place to save time. So let me break this down for you. So the problem is actually difficulty in security and karaoke room. The solution is actually to synthesize all the information across outlets. Then the target audience is actually your, you know, karaoke goers. Then uh, what can they gain is actually to save them time when they can perform their search in a one single place, right? Of course, uh, one of a very bad example, right, which I see many teams, including my own team, that is doing is it can be very ambiguous. Like to overcome the problem of the lack of karaoke room, we introduce an app to better facilitate booking and searching in general. Very, very ambiguous, right? Is it true? Is there really a lack of karaoke room? No, right? It is actually uh, the underlying problem is difficulty of securing a karaoke room during peak hours because if you say there's a lack of karaoke room uh, leans more towards hardware there's not enough rooms to accommodate that that's not true right okay then when you say things like introduce an app uh, what app you know, what, what does it uh, define right what are the features containing in the app then when you say we facilitate booking and certain in general how are you going to do this this is so big right this is very very big so this is something that you avoid this is a good one uh, so Try to include this in your milestone one uh, report. Uh, not only does this will help you uh, in your peer evaluation, it will also imp 
improve your chance of getting the achievement level that you want, right? Uh, as graded by your advisor or by a prof, right? Uh, okay, uh, this is something that parents mentioned, a uh, perceived problem versus real problem. Perceived problem is more of the surface problem that you observe, right? So can be the security team uh, rooster in some ship is understaffed and lack luster. So this is exactly what you see and describe. But you need to think deeper what exactly is the problem. So the real problem is actually, you know, the issue that lies with allocation of manpower is not done properly. This is something that, you know, uh, that is not done properly that needs to be solved, right? And this problem statement is some, something that you can come up with a actionable uh, solution to actually address them, right? So a uh, carry-on will be uneven uh, junior-senior trooper ratio for some shift assignment of troopers is not sensitive to demand. Okay, like, so uh, ultimately the real problem is, uh, you know, there's a misallocation of uh, manpower, right? Then, of course, when you are able to un uh, identify the underlying problems, then you will be able to come up with actionable plans. Like, example, coming up with an allocation plan such that security team rooster for every shift is sufficiently skilled and stuff, right? So, without identifying the underlying problems, you won't even be able to reach this stage, you know, which is to come up with an actionable plan. You don't believe you can try. <laughs> Just perceive problem alone, right? Uh, uh, it's just too broad in general, right? Your ideas will be running, uh, you know, very wildly. So, uh, okay, I think this is the third stage, yeah? Uh, ideation, where you brainstorm your core feature. <coughs> okay, so uh, how do you go about generating some good ideas for your product? So some of the questions that you might raise is uh, using the how might we framework, right? So, example, how might we get you to be more social so they feel more engaged, right? So, actually, if you think about it, this sentence actually demands for action to be taken, right? This is an example of a good how might we uh, question. Okay, carry on will be how might we enable booking information to be accessed anywhere, anytime, right? So, uh, at this stage, we'll be thinking about the features already and also how might we inform our users so that uh, they feel more assured. Then also, it can be things like how might we secure a bicycle without purchasing a bicycle lock? Is that even possible? How might we secure a bicycle without purchasing a bicycle lock? And bicycle rack, you know, using uh, IoT. Okay, last one. How might we improve searching so that the result can be attained by no more than five steps, right? This is to minimize a decision fatigue. Okay, uh, quality. Okay, some pointers. Okay, make sure that it's not too broad, right? Like, how might we build a better house? Uh, too big, right? Generate too many unhelpful ideas. You guys might end up arguing which one is better. Then, uh, the other one is make sure that it's not too narrow, right? This sentence actually diving into the technical details. How might we build a door that swings inwards and outwards? Produce a solution within a question. It's too uh, technical already, right? It actually con uh, it actually refrains you from thinking, right? It leaves little space for uh, innovation. Then uh, a question that is just right actually incorporates the user requirement, right? So uh, example would be how might we improve the traffic flow in high use area of the house, right? Actually narrow down to a segment and make rooms for possibilities, right? You can you can do a quick uh, compare and contrast between these three and uh, you know, understand what it means to write a good quality HMW question. Okay, so storyboarding, uh, I think you guys have seen uh, this before. So actually, uh, you know, you illustrate the sequence of steps uh, your user take through a series of diagrams. Right. Uh, I think later on you guys will also be doing this for your uh, project uh, in one of the little exercises. This, this one, this one, right? So uh, of course, in your storyboard, your story, you need to have your actor, your end user, you need to have your scenario, the context, the environment, the device that the you know the user is using, and also your goal. Like what is it trying to achieve at the end? So make sure everything is very controlled and concise. Uh, only addressing one goal. And one scenario, okay. Uh, okay, example. I think this is another one that Terence come up with. So uh, over here, I think this person called Gary Wong. Uh, wish to go on a holiday, right? But he wants a travel companion, right? So uh, the first scene might be you know uh, 
Gary Wong forming the intention to go for a holiday, right? Then uh, the next one will be him trying to do some research. And then the third one is him able to receive a successful match. Then the last one is him arriving at the destination uh, safely. Right? So, how to start? Don't know. Okay, first one, plan your storyboard with plain text and arrow. Uh, try not to draw all the fanciful things. Try to record on the list uh, on paper. Like what are the steps required for the user to execute this task before adding on the fanciful images? Right? So this is an example. Next. Visualize the first and the last step. Oh, this is very helpful. Think about the first scene and the last scene, right? So uh, think about the intention, then think about the ultimate goal. Because uh, doing so will allow you to fill in the intermediate step in between. So uh, you think about the first scene and the last scene, then you slowly fill out the intermediate step in between. Right. That's the workflow. Uh, okay, then you add emotions to your story. I think you can add some facial features to your characters later in your storyboard. Right? So uh, you know your members can understand better and empathize with your user better. Then of course you add the image last for each scene. Okay, uh, so the result will be a very clean, a uh, very nice storyboard that actually reflects the emotions of the user and uh, using you know, illustrious images and also showcase some of the interface and features that your product will provide. Okay. Okay, uh this is the fourth stage, prototyping stage, right? So prototyping actually comes in a lot of forms, ranging from low fidelity, such as sketches and wireframe, all the way up to high fidelity, which is your fanciful prototype and mockups. Uh, prototype is like the holy grail of your uh of the fidelity where you incorporate like interactions and animations, right? So I will walk through each of them one by one. Uh, okay. So uh wireframe, low fidelity. Okay, what is it? So if you think about it, it's actually a bare essential representation of your app. It contains merely your lines, boxes, and grayscale colors, right? It doesn't have a lot of very uh doesn't have a lot of visual contents compared to prototype because the ultimate aim is really to provide the basic layout and information architects, right? Then uh you really want to focus on the structure and usability. And it is low cost and easy to modify by anyone. You can always take a piece of paper and uh, re-sketch. So uh, at this stage, you really don't have all the things like fonts, typographies, because we don't want to distract them. Our primary focus over here is to provide the basic layout and information uh, architecture for your app. Okay, so some of the features that you want to use to make sure that uh, your wireframes stay in context will be things such as your text, line, icons, checkbox, menu, uh, place folder, buttons, and drop box, uh, sorry, drop down, right? So you notice that the place folder doesn't contain uh, any actual images, right? So that it doesn't distract you from focusing on the structure of the wireframe. Okay, uh, so how to start? Some question you need to ask yourself. So what is the goal of the page, right? What is the page supposed to do? Right, what is the user supposed to do? What is the user expects to see on this page? And how should the content be organized? Right? And what should be your primary message and logo? Where should your primary message and logo go? And ultimately, you want to land your user at your CTA, which is your call to action. This is uh this is like your conversion point. For example, a submit button, for example, a pay now button, right? So this is actually your conversion point. Right, where they click and then they convert. <coughs> the element is known as CTA, call to action. Okay, take note. Uh, okay, and also can the user figure out where to go next, right? So at any point, make sure that the user does not feel lost because if they feel lost, what will happen? They will close the app or restart the app, right? If you don't provide ways of, uh, for them to navigate back, back and forth between screens. Okay, uh, this is one very good online wireframing tools about something. So what's so good about it is uh it actually helps you uh to have uh actually provides the tools necessary to skeleton your wireframe. It doesn't contain a lot of fancy food image, so it's very, very focused. It only cares about the structure and also the con uh and also the content layout of each existing screens, right? 
But this is not for prototyping. This is only for low fidelity, like your wireframe. Okay. Uh, and now we move on to high fidelity. So how to how to upgrade your prototype? Okay, you throw in your fanciful stuff such as your color, typography, your fonts, your interaction, interaction with, with your gesture, your grid system, and also your images. I think this one, Terence will be covering them in part two of the workshop, I think in July. So if you're interested, you can go. Okay, so uh, in the end, you will have a full-fledged prototype, which you will hand to your developers for them to implement the actual product. All right. Closer to a real product. Okay, interaction. This is more like a cheat sheet core gesture. So those that are designing apps uh, need to pay attention to all these. Right? For example, tap is to select an object. Double tap, uh, double tap can be uh, done through rapidly touching of the surface twice with your fingertip. And then drag is mainly used to move uh, elements around. Right? And then flick is uh, mainly, uh, mainly to move an object from one place to another, right, in an instance, right? Actually, there's no difference between a tap and double tap. Depends on how you guys want to design your app. But make sure it's consistent. You cannot have one screen using tap, another one using double tap. Okay, make sure it's consistent. This is like a cheat sheet. Uh. These are more of the common gesture. So try not to screw up all this gesture because these are the user's expectation. <coughs> okay, uh... Yeah, also make sure to stick to two tap rules, uh, making sure that uh, for each gesture, you only stick to two actions, right? Don't do some actions. So some of the tools and kits you can use for prototyping would be things such as uh, Marvel, Adobe XD, Finto. You can go and explore all of them yourself. Uh. But take note that some of this software actually supports Mac, like Sketch. Then they will have also, uh, if you don't want to download anything, you can also use web services. I think uh, Figma is one of them. Where is Figma? Figma is here. Yeah, then if you need icons, you go to get it from a flat icon. Right? If you need inspiration, you go and visit the Revo website. Right? Okay, uh, another question. We yeah, have how many GIFs left? Is this the last question? No, I think this is one of the larger questions. Oh yeah, this is the larger question. Yeah, so let us leave out the Things got it from California last time. Oh my peers. Okay, okay, come. Three difference between a wireframe and prototype. No right or wrong. Oh, you need to name all three la, to get the price. Okay, can this lady try? Uh, speak louder, please. Interaction. Uh, can you elaborate more? Like for example, you can tell me like what does this have, what does this not have? That accounts for one difference. Information on your proto type more to define information. Can you try like, to generalize yeah. your answer? Your answers are very specific. You say that prototype has images and text, right? What are those in general? Yes. Images, text, uh, buttons, um, what do you call it? Text 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 Search bars, what are those? Mm -hmm. What are these things? Your friends can also help. Like, don't leave her answering. Yeah. A bit sad. Uh. Uh, or the rest can also uh, help out. There is no all three answers then. This Android figuring is yours. Okay, sure. Uh, the wireframe focuses on the basic layout. Okay, then the prototype? It's possible to use product. Ah, yeah. Okay, then second one? <laughs> so we have one difference here. So can any other teams here give us two other differences? So this is the main difference, right? He gave a very general answer. It's, it's okay. the main difference. So uh, think of the effort that you need for uh, these two for the iterations. Yes, the time needed. Okay, I cannot be splitting the figurine. So uh, later if one guy can just tell me. You will find another question to give out the figurine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. 
So, 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 I will answer. La. The third one is usually wireframe is very rough and messy, right? Uh, you know, you can quickly sketch a new one if things are not work out. Uh, prototype is usually uh, something that you devise at the end of all your, uh, you know, user research and going through rounds of iteration, then you'll come up with the ultimate prototype that you showcase to your client. Yeah, so, in other words, right, uh, let's say you want to modify your entire product. Which one do you think is easier to modify? Obviously, wireframe, obviously right? Easy, right? Yeah, wireframe can do like uh, drastic changes without uh, a second thought. Whereas if you come out with a prototype already, it is really, really hard to convince others to change your whole uh, product layout, you know? Yeah. So you always do this first, then you move on to add all the aesthetical yes. elements for your prototype, right? In summary. Okay, testing. Last stage already. Usability testing. Why we do this? Because we want to know how satisfied our customer are with our prototype, right? Uh, also help you to save costs before you actually start developing it and start coding it out. Because the earlier you detect a problem, the less expensive it is to fix, right? Don't wait until last minute you, and, uh, that you realize that there's no need for your product. It's too expensive already because developers are involved at that time. Uh, then we also have the effectiveness uh, being dependent on the fidelity of the uh, prototype. So how good your test is actually depends on how good your prototype is uh, that is how good uh, how close it is towards the uh, final product, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you will get more accurate result if your prototype is closer to your uh, final product. So obviously, if you think about it, wireframe, you won't get uh, that much uh, accurate uh, feedback compared to prototype. But you still need to wireframe your ideas first before moving to prototype, right? Okay, uh, how to conduct this other uh, walkthrough, okay? So you define in subject demographic, this is more for recruiting your subject to do usability testing. Okay, identify what needs to be tested and why. Uh, make sure that you only test one feature at a time. No way to test so many stuff, right? Uh, if you are testing the font, then test the font. If you are testing the color, test the color, right? Don't go and jumble up. Because if you go and jumble up, uh, then you don't know what exactly went wrong, what exactly went right, right? So maybe uh, give you an example. Uh, for example, I'm testing a font. Right, uh, I have two uh, product iteration. One is font size 12, another one is font size 16. That's all. Don't go and include other differences like colors. Don't go and include other differences like image. Right, that one you can do it for subsequent sessions. Okay, so uh, of course, you identify your constraints and confounders. Right, like sometimes the device that they are using might affect your uh, testing results. Then uh, you design mini activities for your audience with clear objective, right? Then after you can report the matrix accordingly. Then uh, of course you get them to verbalize their thoughts and actions. You take notes, screen share, video record, of course with their consensus, right? But also make sure that uh, there's not too much human presence in the room when they are conducting the experiment because uh, the tester will be very pressured to give the correct answer. We want them to be as comfortable as possible. Right, uh, want them to operate in a very realistic environment. Right. Uh, then last one is follow up with your participants. This is debrief. Right. Okay, simple test plan. This one you guys can go and look it through. Uh, okay, two types of data that you can gather from a test. One is qualitative, one is quantitative. Right. Qualitative is more towards those verbal feedbacks, opinions, and observations. Quantitative is statistical figures, hard figures, uh, which uh, you know goes back to your metrics. So uh, qualitative answers the why question, right? Why is this particular uh, you know trend happening, right? Why am I seeing this particular figure? Then uh, it's formative and uh, submative. Formative means that uh, you can gather or conduct a qualitative testing uh, anywhere during your development. Summative is usually uh, when you're conducting it at the end of everything, right? Then uh, the other one is think aloud, right? Then uh, it's easy to control, right? Because you can recruit the right participants, you can set up the right environment, you can set up the right device for them to use and test, 
then small sample size, usually up to five. Then you have a quantitative, which answers the what, it doesn't answer the why. It only shows you what is happening, right, through figures. And summative uh, only, right? Uh, because usually you gather quantitative uh, result based on your prototype, right? And prototype is usually produced at the end of the pipeline. Then you have no thing allowed, obviously, because how these uh, data are gathered is actually you disseminate all these uh, mini activities online. So you can't uh, expect the user to voice a lot unless you guys Skype. Right, and also difficult to control their test environment because you will be disseminating all these mini activities for your tester uh, to work on. And large sample size, around 30, I think, uh, would be enough. Okay, so which one is better? Obviously, it's both, right? Because a uh, qualitative, uh, so, sorry, quantitative data allows you to support a claim and qualitative data allows you to make a claim. So uh, quantitative data allows you to support a claim, then the other one allows you to make a claim. So they work hand in hand together. So both are important. Right? I also understand that some of your stakeholders, uh, next time when you are working, they will expect to see some figures because obviously they are not designers, right? They uh, they have business mentality. So uh, and defend your design decision, right? Uh, yeah, both. So when you are gathering a uh, qualitative uh, data, one of the approach you can use is interview. And some of the questions you can ask are, or rather the question you should ask should be rather open-ended. Like, where would you start? How do you feel about this product? Right, what would you do to accomplish uh, this particular task? Okay, then I noticed some hesitation a while back. What exactly happened? Right, and asking uh, the user's expectation, like, what do you think this person is going to do? Right, some of the bad examples are more towards uh, imposing your own opinion, right, when framing these questions, for example. Is A better than B? Yeah, actually narrowing that no narrowing your question down to two options, that's not very good. The other one is how easy was the task? Okay, right? You already established this task as easy already. So obviously uh the testers' mindset were leaning towards how easy the task is and not towards how difficult the task is. Okay, the last one is a lot of people say that having XXX is useful for useful to improve XXX. Do you agree? Right? So this is uh, actually adding a bit of majority voice to your statement. Then obviously a person will say yes, right? Because they want to be seen as a normal person, normal tester. They want to follow suit majority opinion, right? So this is a question that you want to avoid, right? And even having XXX alone, uh, having a particular feature alone, uh, you're actually narrowing down the features that uh, you can actually talk about in your... Uh, in your interview question, okay. Uh, qualitative test example would be A B testing. This one is another one, right? Where you lay out two prototypes side by side and get your user to voice out loud on your opinion, right? Uh, oh, sorry, no, you don't do that. You actually uh split your traffic into half, so. Uh, one set of the user will test the first iteration and another set of the user will test the other iteration. Okay, uh, of course you need to spend time doing two different uh, iterations, design iterations, right? And you need to make sure that uh, when you're testing, you're testing one obvious variable at any time, like what I've mentioned earlier. If you want to test the font, make sure that uh, the difference is only the font. If you want to test the color, make sure that the difference is only the color. Don't mix them up. Because it's very difficult to find out uh, what went wrong and what went right. Right? Uh, also, answers what is happening does not answer the why. If you want to know why uh, you are seeing this particular result, this particular statistical figure, you might need to conduct some uh, qualitative analysis. Then, of course, when you do this, you need to have some initial hypothesis. Right? Otherwise, you will be very, very lost. Uh, and also, these two things can be useless if you don't know what you are doing. Right, so of course, form a hypothesis in mind first. For example, read 
button will generate more traffic compared to green button, right? Then you won't be that lost when you're collecting data for your A-B testing. Uh, metrics. Okay, some of the common metrics that you will see next time, even uh, I think most of you guys will see this next time when you guys are working. Things such as uh, duration, exit rate, task completion, uh, error rate, and bounce rate. Duration is actually uh, you know, the time taken to complete a task. Uh, the exit rate is the number of users exceeding, exiting your app. Then uh, task completion is the number of users that successfully complete your app. Right? Then the error rate is the percentage of uh, error or percentage of page that is being deviated away from the main user flow. Then bounce rate, this is something that is much more interesting. It actually captures the number of people exiting from the first page that they visit. Right? Does that make sense? Right. So okay, maybe I explain it again. So exit rate actually uh, captures the number of people exiting from your app, right? Bounce rate actually captures the number of users that exit from your app by visiting just one page, right? So uh, the user doesn't continue to visit other page. Okay. Does it make sense to you? Right. So okay, okay, again. Okay. So exit rate, right? It captures the number of people exiting the app. So the user can do whatever they want, right? Provided that they don't, uh, you know, hit the end goal. Provided they don't arrive at the end goal, then it will be captured under the exit rate. For bounce rate, right, is when a user visit a website, then they exit immediately. That one will go under bounce rate. Okay. Can I? Okay, uh, okay, this is a very good tool that I recently uh, stumbled upon, okay? So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just now it's fine, you can use this tool, right? This tool actually captures everything, provides everything and it's free. So what you do is you actually create mini missions for your prototype and then uh, you, it will generate a URL where you will share it to your friends, right? Just disseminate it, right? After that, uh, yeah, and that's all. Then it will generate a report on your key matrix. So, so it will show you like a direct success. So how many users actually took the intended path specified in your mission. Then indirect success is how many users navigate other way, but in the end still manage to arrive at the end goal. Now you can even see things like feedback and also click map. You can see uh, where you know your user are clicking. So the more saturated the color is, uh, the higher the click rate. Okay. You can go and explore. Uh, I think if you want to do Apollo 11, uh, this, this tool will come uh, very handy because Apollo 11 requires some yeah, user testing. Sort of testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, or you can do a UML diagram uh, to demonstrate the relationship between your components. Okay, anyway. Yeah, you have other tools as well. You have your common Google Analytics and helps you to track uh, the trends and metrics of your product. Then uh, you also have your typical uh, eye tracking devices to track where your eyes, you know, uh, where your users' eyes are focusing at, uh, so that you will uh, know, uh, you know, which area to pay more attention to, which area to pay less attention to. Okay. Uh, feel free to explore all of this, right? Uh, this is your uh, usability with. For uh, this one, I will leave it up to you guys to go and read up. So mainly this is used to report your findings to your superior next time. Right. Okay, activity one. If we haven't give up this, eh? oh, oh, we don't give up. How, how, this one? Uh, no choice. Lah. Just now the question was uh, up for someone. Else. Okay, lah, maybe we give this out to the team that has the best storyboard. Okay. Make does it make sense? Okay, never mind. Anyway, I will brief you guys on the first activity. So uh what you do is you just grab an A4 paper. I think uh Darren's are distributing it. So you draw a storyboard for your team. Are you guys three separate teams? No. So one team each. One team each. Yeah, one team each. Because there's no point doing two copies. Yeah. So, uh, yes. When you're drawing, make sure that you include actors, scenario, and a goal. We also have another template. Like, I think it's this one. 
So if they are doing a storyboard that is feature based, you can use this. Otherwise, I think this one is enough. So it depends on which one you want to come and get it from me. So later, the first the team with the best story, but I think we will be awarding uh this figurine, okay, to the chosen one. Yeah, I, I also don't have much time to prepare this workshop. Ah, I prepared a slide, but okay, I didn't okay. I didn't think through. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 super rush. But but it's okay, we got the call. I, I didn't do like a dry run, so I don't know how this will go. It is okay. <laughs> so I think uh for time to come just add a few more layers of make it smoother. <laughs>
Guys, guys, make sure that you have these three things in your storyboard. Right? You need to have your end user, you need to have a scenario. Like, uh, are, they, uh, are, are they using this app in a MRT station? Are they using this app at a fast food restaurant, things like that? And also, you need to have a goal, uh, which should be captured in your last scene. Right? These three are very important. I think it's very different what you are trying to do. But make sure that you capture the three items that I specify. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> 
discussing about the results. <laughs> oh well. Okay. 
Okay, right now you have your storyboards ready, right? Uh, is any team confident enough to share with us your scenario, your storyboard scenario? Right, so when you present, please tell us what is your application about. And then once we know your application, right, give us a scenario where your user will use the applications and what happens after the user use the application. There's a three things I'm going to mention, actually. Um, actor, scenario. Yeah, actor, scenario, and... Uh, and go. Go, go, go. And go? Yeah, and go. The objective. Oh, the no. objective. <laughs> so which team wants to showcase their storyboard? Everyone will have to do it. Lah. So uh, let's quickly showcase, then we move on to the next exercise, which is more meaningful. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So uh, maybe you can cover these three areas. You can stand on the spot and just share with everyone the three areas that you Yeah, they just stand up, uh, yeah. describe, show quickly. Yeah. Everyone listen, please. Yeah. So um, our user is uh, named Tom. Okay. So um, the scenario he's in is that um, Tom wants to help the environment, but he does not know how how uh, he can achieve that. So um, then he, he he googles for advice. Then he found out uh, about our app called Eco Action and download that app. Then um, from that app, he learns more about the possible actions he can do from the recommendations of the app. And um, um, uh, yeah, and um, the app also uh, helps Tom to keep track of the actions he, he took to help the environment. So by seeing the impact that uh, by, by seeing the impact that he and the fellow users made, he feels more motivated, and, uh, and he also feels a sense of achievement. From his action, and also he can share his stories on the social platforms. And by doing that, he encourages his friends to also take the similar actions with him uh, using this app. Uh, finally, uh, by using the uh, equal action in this app to achieve his goals, he is satisfied by his contribution to help the environment. Okay, so do you guys hear what they say? So mainly the goal is to get advice on how to go about helping the environment. Yeah. Through the app that they propose. <coughs> okay, sure. Can we have the next? Uh, Can we give them a round of applause? Yes, please. So let us move on very quickly to the next key. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the row behind. Yeah. Uh, one of you just quickly present. Just keep it short. Maybe 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have much time. Yeah, uh, just keep it short. 30 seconds. Just tell us what. Is, is there a line there? Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, let us just keep it short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so our one is like to find the Wi-Fi hotspot. So it starts off with a guy on cannot find a strong Wi-Fi. Okay. So, find that. so he finds, he looks like the app, then he tells him like the, the hotspots, and then he creates a heap at one Okay. So the yeah. Then at the end of the day, he gets a uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, next team, please. Okay, so the goal is to uh, define out the hotspot in the location, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. next team. Nice. Yeah, let's, let's pass over this uh, process. Yeah, so this is short. Uh, okay. He has to use a uh, mobile payment wallet. Okay. So, and he also wants uh, to actually move towards the capital society. Okay. So, he okay. wants to know when he can eat and use his preferred mobile payment okay. wallet. But then there's he uses a few, but then there's no like app out there that uh, mm. compile for you. So this is our app that will compile the payment option for the app for all this. So all he has to do is just to choose where, where he would like to be, and then he would display the mobile wallet to set it. So eventually he eats happily, then he would pay without having to like go to the center and say like, oh, it's better to set it. Okay, so the goal is to identify the payment uh, methods for each and every outlet. Okay, do you guys get that? Okay. Okay, round of applause for that gentleman over there. Okay, next. Uh, so this is Sam. He's playing Hearthstone and he gets the challenge friend quest. Okay. So he, quest. So he realizes that he has no one to uh, trade the quest with online, so he goes to the forums and stuff. And in the end, he gets scammed of his quest. So he finds our app, and the next time he gets the quest, he uses it, and he finds someone using the app, and he doesn't get scared. 
So Hearthstone is a game, right? And then you are doing this trading because of some game currency thing, yeah. is it? Okay. Okay. That's the change. That's a bit of context uh, for everyone. Okay. Just curious, uh, So how do you defend against such scams? Uh, trust factor measures these systems. So basically, you the more uh, successful trades you do on the app, then the higher the trust factor. Then like first, it's a player A or B to change player B as well. Okay. 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 So essentially, it's an app that allows you to assess the credibility of the traders that you make on the game. Okay. Okay. Round of applause for that guy. Okay. Next team. Um, yes. Next team. Uh, the last row. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Show us your storyboard, or maybe explain to us your storyboard. Okay. So this is this is Ben. Okay. An MRP station. Okay. Probably here's a Starbucks app. <laughs> okay. But isn't there a law to like give up your seat when you see like pregnant women and stuff? Oh, stuff. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got okay, it, so next time there will be a stomach it. Seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's okay. Okay, so it's to help you secure a seat in a public transportation. Okay, uh, next one. Next thing. Showcase all the itinerary for a trip, correct? Okay, next. A round of applause for that guy. Okay, next. Yeah, so Tom is a heavy soccer player, but not very much. So he asked his friends to like play a game, but it's not enough to fall too much. He downloads his app called Sports Talk, Sports Match Breaking Man, and gives him like a match. Yeah, then other interested users like add in their uh, can indicate interest and say, oh, I want to play this. So then the uh, app sets up, then we gotta communicate and then uh, finalize the match details. So they enjoy a proper community. Okay. So the goal is to find a spot convenient for the yeah. same spot. Okay? Okay. Uh yeah, next thing. Okay. Next one. Uh, so everything is like uh students who is like a little bit of the factor. So it's like after the session, she either find a seat first or try order first. So she goes to the store and sees the food is over. So he goes down to the seat and he finds a power. He gets the QR code and he is able to order several from the QR code by scanning the QR code and he orders from the app. The final scene of the screen is how to receive a QR code. So he's to help you find a QR code, is it? So you can just scan the QR code and the top side is the name. But the Hawker Center also needs to provide you the QR code, right? Okay, so it's to consolidate QR code. Am I getting you right on the app? Uh, basically, you don't need to leave your seat to order food. Ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. Right, right. So uh, in a way, this is much more convenient. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, move on to the next one. Okay, next thing. So, uh, so in the first team is uh team play. Okay. Different sports, there's different strategies. Yeah, so they so they spend it. Yeah. 
Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. So basically, they are trying to come out with a uh, tool that uh, allows uh, their coach, yeah. right, or advisor. <laughs> yeah, 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 to strategize it on a digital yeah. app to move the location yeah. of key players, things like that, if I'm not wrong. Okay, <laughs> next one. Uh. So, uh, he is at the event, and then he wants to find out what he wants to be. Okay, you know, there's so many things that the coach has that he cannot be. Right? So, we create this app, which is like a hyper local option. So, uh, he'll go through the app that runs in the app, talking about like, the area of what he wants to be or what they're recommending. Also, stuff like that. Then he also makes it yeah, So, through the app, through the platform, then he can find out what he's good there. Yeah, so, Okay. Okay. Next. 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 Go. 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 Anyone of you? Come on. Come on. Uh, so M is what? Okay. There's this Sam. Sam is sad because he got no money and he wants to go out. <laughs> so one day he's tired for finals and then he's tired and he wants to take a break. Then he receives uh, a message from a friend. This his friend tells him to download this app. It's called cash, then you can do surveys to get money. So like, he started doing some surveys. Then he got money. Then he got money! Then he became happy. Then he got, then you can see his balance, then he became happy. He got advice. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. 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 Interesting. Okay, last one. <laughs> now last two. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay, uh, for me, uh, okay, Alex is his first time picking this bus, bus ID. So he's not sure where to stop exactly. So he has this app. Okay, then this app also you can use to tap the easily. So you can use your, use your phone as an easily. Then after that, there will be a list of the bus stop. Then you can you can just select which bus uh you want to stop at. Then this uh the the bus stop will be alerted to the bus driver. Like then uh in case you fall asleep or something, there will be an alert if he misses bus if his bus stop is the next. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, last thing. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. We got Danish and three of his friends, but they're eating at some <laughs> OS restaurant. So then, oh, then now they need to after they eat, they split the bill, man. So one of his two friends, I think he very, think he very smart. He use calculator. Then Danish smarter, he use the app. Ah, uh, to scan the receipt. Now after you scan the receipt, you got all the items. Then he just drag and drop. Smiley faces representing the. The, the people involved, yeah, the three friends. Uh, then after that, you just send one button, then ask them for the money. Then, then the friends will send the money to the money. Uh, the money will have to your money. So okay. that's the end. Is it like a digital uh, wallet? Is it? Sorry? Is it like a digital wallet? Oh, it's just uh, money split. Uh, oh, oh, okay, a cost splitter. Got it. Okay, uh, that brings us to our last activity, Affinity Direct Exercise. So using the storyboard uh, you have, Okay, what I want you guys to do is to go around collecting feedback. I mean, you guys have already heard what other teams are doing. So you record each observation and feedback on a uh, post-it notes. Then after that, you go and find an empty wall, paste it on it, and then go and group uh, you know, relevant post-it notes together and try to label it accordingly using the structure that I have mentioned later on. I will be showing them later. Okay, so of course, give meaningful labels, uh, labels that is concise and clear. Right, so uh, you keep doing two and three until you have no posting left, right? And ultimately, uh, what I want you to take away from this exercise is the pattern that you discover, right, from the underlying relationship of your posting notes, right? Uh, of course, the feedback of from your peers, right? Uh, okay, keep your feedback short and concise. Then write in first person, right? Focus on usability and whether the product addresses the stated problem. Okay, don't don't go and comment on things such as oh your font size not big enough, eh, your color not correct. No, I don't want to I, I don't want those kind of feedback, right? I want you to uh, focus more on the usability and uh, whether what this team is doing actually solves the problem statement that they are intending 